Hello viewers, Alan here, welcome back to the workshop. In my previous video I made this guy, which is a chuck for holding um, hex head bolts so you can work on the threads. And it's worked out pretty well, I'll put a link to it in the description. But it got me thinking about other ways of holding round objects, and I had a bit of time on my hands so I played around with an idea. And the idea started out this way, with a pair of V-blocks uh, to be put in a bench vise, different di to suit different diameters. I thought, hmm, it's an interesting idea. So I developed it further, the design further, and this is what it uh, turned out to be. There's uh, springs here to preload it, make it easy to drop in the vise. Put your um, piece in, and then do it up. And there's a, a lip here, which I don't know whether that will show up or not. There's a lip on each side, so when you drop it in the vise, it won't fall through. Anyway, uh, the idea seemed to have some promise to me, uh, so I decided to make it in steel. And that's what this video is about, so please join me as I work through how I did that. So I want to cut two 15mm wide strips off this 12mm thick plate, and uh, I've made up this little uh, fixture, I suppose, jig, whatever, to hold it. And I'm going to see whether my uh, battery powered cold saw can do the business in 12mm plate. I've used this in 4 and 5mm and didn't have any trouble with that, but 12mm seems like a big ask. Well, let's give it a go, see what happens. struggling a bit. It is, uh, it is getting there. Oh, I think we'll press on. Give it a bit of a rest from time to time. I think the uh, thermal overload is called time. Give it a chance to cool down. Not sure whether the motor is cut out because of the uh, heat in the motor or battery. Let's just check the battery. Yeah, it's uh, caning the battery, so I'll get another one. There's a bit of warmth in that. I didn't go quite far enough with the cut. So the light reflecting off it makes it look a little bit uneven, but it's actually a pretty good cut. I'm pretty impressed actually, 12 mil plate. Looks like it wandered off a bit at the end here though. Yeah. See what that was all about. Anyway, I'll do the other one now. So since it uh, was uh, working pretty hard with that previous pass. I thought I'd do the second one, uh, try doing the second one, uh, in two passes. So first step of the cut is about half the thickness of the plate. And we'll see uh, whether it makes better progress like that. I don't know whether that's a good or a bad idea. We'll find out. Well, it seems much happier with that idea. All right, there we go. It definitely worked out better going in two passes. The saw struggled a lot less. So I guess that's the answer, 6mm layers. 
Unfortunately, when I cleaned these pieces up that I cut off with the uh, battery powered saw, I realised that I hadn't uh, cut to the right width. Um, this is the depth of the V-block per se, but I want a lip on the top which will stop it from dropping past the uh, top surface of the vice jaw. So I need them to be a bit bigger. So I have to cut two more. But rather than torturing my poor um, <laughs> cold saw, I thought I'd use this setup instead and use a, um, a more robust sort of cutter. Something which I think will be a bit happier to do um, material this thick. So the setup, this uh, piece of stock is spaced off this angle plate with a just a, a filler piece at the back here so the cutter can go right through without attacking the angle plate. Um, it's clamped on here of course as you can see with this bar and this is the end of a bolt which is uh, the head of which is against the front face of the angle plate so when I do this up it doesn't just bend the bar it, it pulls up tight. So this is pretty solidly clamped but as the belts and braces there's a stop block in here uh, held in place by this uh, piece just to stop the uh, cutter from trying to push the um, stock that way. So uh, let's see how that works out. I think we'll be taking it pretty easy. I never know with these things whether it's best to feed this into the face or start from the end. When you start from the end all of the teeth engage one at a time so it gives a horrible rattle. Um, so. I think I might not start right on the end. Also I've decided that um, this is certainly capable of doing 12mm depth of cut and it will have to do it, but I'm going to do it in two passes. So first up we'll go in at 6. So I'm taking that 6mm cut out to full depth now, 12mm, and that'll cut this guy off. Right, there we have it. Doesn't do a bad cut. Right, well I'll just uh, finish cleaning up these faces with the homebrew cutter. Oh, I've got to be happy with that surface finish. Right, so that's got my two pieces of stock cleaned up to the correct overall dimensions and now it's time to start uh, milling the features in. So I have a set of V grooves here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 16 millimetres and um, uh, I have to do a machining on the back which will create that lip which is the piece I forgot about when I cut the first two pieces of stock and a couple of holes and um, then a couple of counterbores because I've uh, got a couple of springs to make this easier to use. So uh, over to the milling machine to get stuck into these uh, V grooves. So I've got the uh, stock set up in the sign vise now and this is mounted at 45 degrees um, and I've got a gauge block stack under, under the sign bar here to uh, set that angle accurately. And because I want the uh, bars in this orientation, I've actually got a sub vise mounted uh, so the clamping orientation is rotated 90 degrees. Um, these uh, are fetched up against a stop block down here. And uh, the stop block has two jobs. The first is to stop these things walking that way. And secondly, perhaps more importantly, that face now, because that top corner there is contacting the face, that's my reference for setting the uh, zero on the, uh, for the X direction. So I've set zero on that um, and allowed for the cutter diameter. So this side of the cutter, which is doing the work, 
will be on the zero mark. Uh, and similarly, this top corner here, I've set that to be zero for the uh, Z direction. The Y direction doesn't matter, we're just going backwards and forwards. Uh, what else to say? Yes, so I've got a, a established a chart, which I might just go a quick look at, where I've calculated all of the uh, machining offsets from that face and from that date and there. So that I would go in, um, so I come down to a depth and, how can I say this? So I, I go that way and that way, the right amount to get the uh, the V that I want. So remembering there's a 16, 12, 10, etc. So uh, all that seems uh, reasonable. Uh, let's start doing some machining and see if it actually works. Right, I'm going to start with a 16mm V. Uh, you can see there's actually a shim stack under there, or a gauge block stack, uh, just to keep that distance from wandering. That's just a bit of plastic tube to make sure they can't fall out. Anyway, so I'm doing 16 millimeters, and the side length for a 16 millimeter opening V is calculates at 11.3 millimeters. Uh, so I should have to cut in 11.3. Um, anyway, I'll start off with a 3mm that way and uh, a 0.2 short of maximum depth. We'll see how that works out. seem to work just fine so I'll go another three millimeters and I might use the power feed this time well that started to load the cutter up a little bit so I think for the next pass I'll get some uh, lubricant on it chips out of the way. Alright, that's 21 and a half, so we'll go now to 23. I'm going to change the line, that's quite a lot. I think I'll do that in two passes. So this will be the final pass to size. It's about another 0.2 on the full height. And same across the bottom, another 0.2. Right, well, let's have a look at that. Well, it's definitely a V-shaped groove. Both of my 16mm dowels are in use at the moment. But this is 5 8 which is pretty close. I don't know that that's sitting halfway in. All right, let's see if we can measure what it is across the opening. It is 16 across the opening. <laughs> and I've just realised, something which is probably obvious to everybody else from the start, that uh, if it's 16 millimetres across the opening, the 16 millimetre round thing isn't going to go half the way in. But uh, it's not a, not a fatal error. I think um, the, for the function of the thing, it's still going to grip on the flanks. Anyway, we'll press on. At least I've got the size that I was actually aiming for, even if it turns out that wasn't the best uh, option. So maybe that's now actually a 14mm V. <laughs> anyway, the next one. So if that's somewhere near the right place, we should have a 7mm wide land, and it looks like we do. Alright, well I won't bore you with any more cutting of Vs. Uh, that was the exciting one, I guess, so I'll bring you back when I've finished. Right, well that's taken the last cut, so I've got a full set of grooves. Now I'm sure the observant amongst you will very quickly notice that stuff up there. 
that came about because I uh, transposed the uh, Z and X uh, coordinates and I had to uh, redraw and redistribute the available space to finish up in the right place so yeah, it ticks you off when you do stupid things like that but it's not enough to justify going back and starting from scratch so I'm just going to live with it it came about by the way because um, the drawing that I was following I had the um, z-axis readings on the right hand side of the drawing and the x-axis on the left hand side that's not the way my machine set up you can see I was using the, the Quill DRO on the left and the x-axis control on the right and that's how it came about but no excuses it's just a stupid error and um, I don't know the older I get the more often I seem to make that stupid sort of stupid mistake anyway this is going to do the job I intended it to do uh, or as well as it might have that's just a cosmetic thing so let's pull this apart get cleaned up and get ready for the next process so now I need a six millimeter hole at each end for the bolts and a four millimeter deep pocket to house the uh, end of the spring I'll do nicely okay and same for the other one okay so last machining operation is to machine a rebate in the back of these two which will create that lip so we have to go three deep here and leave the two millimeter wide upstand so I'm using a two flute high speed steel end mill and running it about 1100 rpm and it seemed to be cutting all right so that was a 10 millimeter wide pass up the guts. Now I'm going to come down and trim the sides. Not quite at full depth though. So I've got the end mill set to cut at um, uh, 2.8 millimeters depth, and um, it's in, in fed into the side wall by um, four millimeters. So it's actually removing quite a bit of material here. And the problem that I was having is uh, it's actually cutting a canyon, if you like. And there, there is a real problem with uh, chips getting in the way. And you'll see at the end that there's quite a lot of um, marking in the, on the bottom and on the sides of the cut. So here I'm cutting the ends of the lips back by 14.5 millimetres. Uh, both lips, both ends. And that's to create um, uh, clearance for the bolt heads. Oh, and I'll just mention that the reason I'm machining this way is to make sure that the V-blocks finish up at the same height when they go into the vise. So I'm not showing it here, but uh, my final clean-up pass was taking the 2.8 depth of cut down to 3 and uh, all over the, the, the bottom of the, the trench and cleaning out the inside faces of the lips by another 1mm so that they would finish up 2mm thick. Right, well let's finish the machining, time for a big clean up. So here's the finished object with its uh, spring loading and the lips uh, and the odd spacing, <laughs> but never mind that. Uh, so there's 16, she grabs that and actually it'll work down to two and a half and obviously anything in between. So there's 12, I think it would also grab it in the next one actually, that was an alternative. So it does what I wanted it to do, grabs everything from 5 eighths down to next to nothing. <laughs> so to that extent I'm going to call it a success. Well as you saw that seemed to work out pretty well. Although I have to say, one of my friends said, well that's a great cure, but there's no disease for it. <laughs> and he may have a point, but uh, anyway, it was good fun making it, and I, I imagine that uh, a use case will emerge. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.